Greg Brockman, president of OpenAI, was the key featured speaker at the end of today. And according to him, basic research is back, most likely meaning that to advance further will require techniques going beyond transformers and maybe even what we currently have as reinforcement learning. Something else I learned that was interesting is during the launch of ChatGPT and again during the launch of ImageGen this year, when there were, I think, up to 100 million users, OpenAI had to pull compute capacity from its research in order to be able to allow the service to continue. Something else that stood out to me with Greg Brockman is how he was one of the few speakers to reference anything really more than a few years old. He talked about Alan Turing's paper from the 1950s and also a paper, an early paper on neural nets in 1940s. And in some ways he commented on how AI within OpenAI over the last few years has been a return to those 1940s where the idea was just to scale, add more compute. He also got a question that was recorded from Paris by Jensen, a really long rambling question to which Greg Brockman basically answered just by more NVIDIA GPUs. The best talk of the day though, I would say was Simon Willison, who talked about running a benchmark based on getting LLMs to generate images of pelicans. Here you can find uh, the full keynotes and a pelican that is created using O3. And this is created by asking for an SVG file, which is not something that language models are trained natively on. So it's quite difficult. But this Pelican on a bicycle with O3 is probably one of the best Pelicans you will see. O4 Mini, uh, just a little bit behind. And Simon takes this even a little bit further. Here you can see how some of the other models compare. Claude Sonnet, or Pelican on a bicycle, Claude Opus, not really too much of a Pelican there. And Gemini Pro, uh, somewhat of a complicated Pelican, but nonetheless, a lot better than would have been done in previous years. And then some even cheaper models, GPT 4.1 Nano doing pretty great, uh, GPT 4.1 Mini and GPT 4.1. And look then at how that compares to Lama 405B and uh, Lama 70B. So Pelicans, just the new capability that language models have been able to do. And Simon takes this even further. He generates a whole benchmark where he heads them up one against the other and creates an ELO just like in chess or just like uh, LM Arena. And here he puts it in a leaderboard and he finds, according to the Pelican, uh, Gemini 2.5 Pro in the lead, O3 uh, up there as well, Cloud 4 Sonnet, then Gemini Flash, GPT 4.1 behind, and then Cloud 3.7 Sonnet down behind here. So in a world where LLM benchmarks are maybe getting gamed, these kind of creative benchmarks become a little bit more interesting. Now, my favorite track today was the infrastructure track, which was kicked off by Dylan Patel, who is uh, one of the owners or the founders of Semi Analysis, uh, which some of you may subscribe to. And in short, he talked about geopolitical implications of semiconductor bans and how the strategy for rolling out semiconductors is working globally. The main takeaway is that in the US, it's very difficult to get the power, the electrical power necessary to build more data centers. And so they are instead being built in the Middle East through agreements being made with Middle Eastern countries, including Saudi Arabia. They are in a better position to build more power and while this comes uh, with political trade-offs, it seems like that is the way perhaps that some of the increasing uh, GPU capacity will be brought online for some of these major companies. Of course, China is much more well able to increase its power production than the US. It's added an entire US within about seven or eight years, I think Dylan said. And so even though China has not got the same access to the chips as in the West, running those weaker chips may still work well because they have the power to run many, many more. The second talk in that infrastructure track was by Kyle Cranon, or Cranon, not sure in pronunciation of NVIDIA. And he talked about something that's been released from NVIDIA called Dynamo. I'm going to cover it more on this channel, but it's the idea that you can separate out your inference into pre-fill and then decode. And by achieving this separation, which allows you to keep all of the GPUs uh, running at maximum compute and also using up the KV cache. It allows you to probably increase inference by maybe 2x. This is a graph here showing the tokens per second per user and then the tokens uh, per second per GPU. And there's a classic trade-off here where if you give the users very high inference speed, you're going to lower the through push of the GPU and vice versa. But if you move to this blue curve here or these blue dots, which represent separating pre-fill and decode, you can get better utilization and get better throughput. So you have a Pareto improvement. And this is the way that a lot of the libraries are going now and something I'll be talking about fairly soon. The third talk in that infrastructure track was given by Robert uh, Wacken, again, not sure in pronunciation of H, uh, um, an 
AI accelerator company. And it started off with this, this slide here, which is kind of negative from um, an AI accelerator standpoint. It shows the teraflops per millimeter squared of dye uh, versus delivery rate. And it really puts in context how there's a big improvement from NVIDIA A100 or B100 up to H100, but really, and this is a log graph by the way, on the Y axis, but really the rate of improvement since then uh, is not so great. And it's difficult to find any further improvements. At the same time, he highlighted that how the big companies like Gemini, like Google, or like OpenAI are spending so much on compute that it just makes sense for them to spend a small fraction of that to develop their own chip. And the way he sees things going is that rather than use general purpose uh, computers, GPUs, it will be highly incentivized for these language model companies to develop their own specialized chips that are not able to do things like multiplications in, say, 32 bits or 64 bits, but may only, if it's an inference uh, unit, be able to do FP4, float 4, or FP8. And by doing that specialization, get much more out of the chip. That's at least the bet that he's making. Two last thoughts before I leave you. I went to the Tiny Teams track where I saw the Bold CEO and also one of the founders of Gumloop. They are teams that have raised in the tens of millions, but have very few team members um, in the order of 10 to 20 team members each. And there was also a talk there by the DevRel lead, Hassan El Ghari of Together AI. And this thought that stuck with me here, which is to make sure the UI looks good and is straightforward to use. Now, I know on this channel, I don't talk so much about app development, but I like to make a few apps in my free time. And definitely, uh, this makes me realize I need to spend more time thinking about UI and maybe a bit less time thinking about backend. Last of all, there was a talk uh, from Windsurf. Windsurf, of course, has been acquired by OpenAI for $3 billion. Um, the director of product there talked about how Windsurf is looking to pull in information well beyond the code editor from many other tools going beyond just access to GitHub, but access to things like Figma or Jira or Linear, other workflow tools to pull that into context. And yeah, my main thing with Windsurf is I hope they continue to develop the product uh, strongly. I think it's hard to do when you get acquired. The motivations are often different and you're within a large organization. So I'm kind of disappointed Windsurf is getting acquired. I would have liked there to be continued uh, competition with Cursor and independent development on those fronts. But then again, maybe they'll have access to better resources and we'll see them do well with OpenAI. That's it from day two. By the way, I think it's technically considered day one because workshops is day zero, uh, but I'm calling it day two and I may be back tomorrow with day three. Cheers.